Have you ever been trapped in a never-ending frenzy where every passing moment feels like a blur, leaving you gasping for a chance to pause and catch your breath? In her insightful book, Pursuing Peace, Joyce Meyer explores the importance of seeking peace at all costs. This beautiful hardcover edition is filled with meaningful scriptures and uplifting quotes from Joyce, providing valuable guidance for living a peaceful lifestyle. So grab a cup of coffee, find a comfortable spot, and embark on your journey to find peace. Remember, this limited-time YouTube offer won't last long. Go to joycemeyer.org pursuit to get your copy today and start your pursuit of peace. Are we going to believe the God of our feelings or the God of the Bible? I guess that's the question I put before you today. You see, really, I'd like to have all the feelings to go along with everything, but I had such a problem with guilt, and I had to start by declaring that I was not guilty even while I felt guilty. I do what I do because I've seen God's power transform my own life, and He will do it for you. The key to everything is found in God's Word. I'm Joyce Meyer, and I believe that God can heal you everywhere you hurt. God will always give us the ability to do what He has told us to do. Today, we're going to talk about, at least in this morning session, pressing past guilt and shame. How many people experience a lot of guilt in your life? Well, I'll tell you, I was a, addicted to guilt. I didn't feel right if I didn't feel wrong. I, uh, I mean, I had a real serious problem with it. And when you do, you just feel guilty about everything, and most of it, you're not even guilty. It's just a lie that the devil is telling you, and you believe it. He's the accuser of the brethren. That's what he does. He accuses us day and night. And the Bible, however, has taken care of that. And if we would believe it and live by it, we wouldn't have to suffer through all that. Because there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. If we sin or when we sin, because we will sin, admit your sins, confess your sins, be willing to turn away from them. God forgives you. He forgets your sin, remembers them no more, and removes them as far as the west is from the east. So, if you go back talking to God about things that you've already repented for, you're talking to him about something that he doesn't remember. Amen? So, we need to clear the slate here today. And you need to keep it clear every day. And you say, but I feel guilty. Well, that is the issue, the feelings. And so... Are we going to let, are we going to believe the God of our feelings or the God of the Bible? I guess that's the question I put before you today. You see, really, I'd like to have all the feelings to go along with everything, but I had such a problem with guilt, and I had to start by declaring that I was not guilty even while I felt guilty. See, if it, I mean, the Bible says, if you admit your sins and confess your sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's what the Bible says. If you admit your sins, confess your sins. Now, trying to hide them don't work. But if you bring it out in the open, you talk to God about it, God knows that we are imperfect. He, he, he knows them. in Psalm it says he remembers that we are nothing but dust. He made us out of a handful of dust, a handful of dirt. Amen? And so I want people to enjoy their lives. God wants you to enjoy your life. And I'll tell you, nothing is more miserable than to feel guilty all the time. I want to read you Psalm 32. It took me a long time to get over guilt. It started in my childhood when my dad was sexually abusing me and the devil, of course, made me think it was my fault, which that was stupid. It's not a five-year-old kid's fault if their grown parent is sexually abusing them. But do you know that most kids, when parents have problems, the devil easily convinces them it's their fault? 
Even in divorce, most kids think it's their fault. Maybe if I would have been better, this, this wouldn't have happened. David, you know, sinned with Bathsheba in what I would call a pretty bad way. I mean, he had a great relationship with God, and yet he, it was a time when men went off to war and David stayed home, and that was his big mistake. Sometimes if you're not where you need to be, it leaves the door open for the devil to give you trouble. Amen? There may be people today that were supposed to be here and they didn't come and they'll get in trouble somewhere. I mean, really, if you're where you need to be, if you're where you're supposed to be, then you can't get in trouble. And David was not where he was supposed to be. So he saw Bathsheba taking a bath on the roof. I guess they took baths in strange places then. And uh, he lusted after her, and because he was the king, he could have what he wanted. So he called her and had sex with her, and then she became pregnant, and he made it worse by having her husband killed. And here this man who was so close to God, he went a whole year without repenting. <laughs> Didn't repent for a whole year. It's amazing how we can blame things and make excuses for things and do all kinds of things to keep from facing our own situations. But in Psalm 32, it says, Blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied is he who has the forgiveness of his transgressions continually exercised upon him whose sin is covered. Blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied is the man to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. See, God wants us to be truthful with ourselves. And can I stop now and say that's the beginning of all healing? All healing begins by being truthful with yourself about yourself. I'm going to say it again. All healing begins by being truthful with yourself about yourself. It's easy to find fault with everybody else, but you're not responsible for them and neither for I. We're only, we're only going to answer for ourselves before God. When I kept silent before I confessed, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. Wow. He said, before I confessed, I was one miserable dude. But you know, a lot of times when we have that kind of misery, we do blame it on somebody else. It, it's your fault, you're not making me happy. Well, you know what I learned? My joy is not Dave's responsibility. Somebody needs to tuck that in their pocket and take it home with them. Your joy is not somebody else's responsibility. If you're insecure, it's not everybody else's responsibility to make you feel good about yourself. We need to get that from God. How, how, many, how many insecure women are they who get mad all the time because their husbands don't bring them flowers and this, that, and something else? And, you know, you're... Gifts is one of my love languages, but Dave's not a gift buyer. So I had to get used to that. But my other love language is acts of service, and he's really good at that. He'll do anything that I ask him to. He does the dishes, he makes the bed, does all kinds of stuff. So if you want to be a happy person, you have to look at what people do, not what they don't do. Amen? Amen? For day and night, your hand of displeasure was heavy upon me. My moisture was turned into the drought of summer. Pause and calmly think about that. I acknowledged my sin to you. Now listen to this. And my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, continually unfolding the past until all is told and out in the open. Then you instantly forgave me the guilt and iniquity of my sin. For this forgiveness, let everyone who is godly pray. Before he confessed, he was miserable. 
As soon as he confessed, he got his joy back. Amen? I tell you, if we want to be happy, we got to stay clean with God all the time. Get really good at repenting. He knows anyway. You're not telling him something that he doesn't know. You can't keep secrets from God. I don't think I'll tell God that. Well, he already knows. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Matthew 5, 48 says, You therefore must be perfect, growing in the complete maturity of godliness in mind and character, having reached the proper height of virtue and integrity, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, you know, until I read this scripture in the Amplified Bible, it used to really scare me. Be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. I felt like I was trying to do something that I never could do. But the Amplified brings it out clearer. It says that that really means growing into maturity, growing. Do you know what? God is very satisfied as long as we're growing, even if it's just a little tiny bit. You don't have to have arrived. You just need to be on your way. Amen. Amen. It says when he comes back to get us that we will all be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And it doesn't matter if you need a lot of change or a little change. However much change is needed, you're going to get it before you can go into glory to live with him. Paul pressed toward perfection but he still made mistakes. We're going to still make mistakes. We're going to sin. Paul said he was the chief of sinners. But the good news is, is Jesus died to take care of it. He, the Bible says that on the cross, he killed the power of sin. Well, what is the power of sin? Guilt. <laughs> that's the only real power that sin has. If, if it's forgiven... And all of your sin, any sin you ever will commit's already been forgiven. Do you know that? All God's waiting for is for you to ask and receive. Ask and receive. It's already been done. There's nothing you can add to it. There's no more that Jesus needs to do. And you know what our guilt is? It's a sacrifice. And there's no more sacrifice to be added to the sacrifice that Jesus made. It was perfect and complete. But I feel, but I feel guilty. Well, when you do, if you've repented, then you need to do a little talking. You need to have a talk with yourself. You need to have a talk with the devil. And you need, you, I mean, especially, you know, if you're home by yourself, you're feeling guilty, you say, I may feel guilty, but I'm not guilty because I've repented. Yeah. Come on, get that mouth open and say something worthwhile, not... Not just, I feel guilty. Well, I feel guilty, but I don't live by my feelings. I live by the Word of God. And the Word says I'm forgiven, so I'm forgiven. And I'll tell you, if you'll do that, it won't be very long. It might be a few months, but it won't be very long, and you'll be free from that guilt that follows you around and tries to make you miserable all the time. But if you just wait till you feel, till you don't feel, come on. I feel, I feel, I don't feel. Well, ooh, this is going to be so good today. Man, I wish I could just go sit out there and listen to this. See, that's the pressing part. That's where you, you got to just, you can't just sit back passively and say, well, I, I hope these feelings go away. No. You have to press. Depress means to press against your pressure. The enemy's a liar. He tries to make you think that God's mad at you. I have good news for you today. God is not mad at you. He's actually very proud of you that you got up on a Saturday morning and got over here to hear the word all day. Amen. He's proud of you, not mad at you. You know, my father was an angry man, and he was always mad about something, and you always thought it was something you did. And I grew up so rooted in that guilt and shame, 
and that fear of his anger that I always, in my relationship with God, I always had this low level. And I, I think a lot of things are like this low level guilt. It's not like right in your face. You don't even really sometimes realize that's what it is. But I had this low level fear that God was mad at me, that I was never quite enough, never quite doing enough. And oh, I am so glad to be free from that. I'll tell you, and I, you know, I hope this doesn't sound wrong, but it's just been a long, long time since I've felt guilty about anything. Because guilt is not what God is asking for. He's asking for sincere repentance. Now, you know, if I do something really bad, whatever really bad is to me, yeah, I feel bad. I think the Bible says we should grieve over our sins. And sometimes I'll find myself even for days saying, God, I'm so sorry I did that. But that's different than feeling guilty and condemned and pressed down like God doesn't love you anymore. And I'll even say like, I'm so sorry that I did that, but I'm so grateful that you still love me. I'm so grateful that your love is unconditional and that I know that I'm forgiven. We need to start talking differently than what we do. Come on. All right. Paul said, last night I went through this in the Amplified Bible. And it's, it's beautiful in the Amplified. This is the ESV, but it still gets the point across. My determined purpose is that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, that I might share his suffering so I can become like him in his death. You say, suffering? I didn't come here today to hear about suffering. I came here for you to tell me how I could get away from my suffering. Well, we're not talking about suffering, sickness and disease and disasters. We're talking about being willing to suffer in the flesh, dying to self. Have you ever heard that term? Not a very popular term. That if by any means possible, I might attain to the resurrection from the dead. The Amplified says it lifts me out from among the dead while I'm in the body. So there is a place that we can be in Christ where no matter what kind of problems are going on in this world or what kind of problems are in our life, we can deal with the problem but live above it where we can still be peaceful and have joy and still be a blessing to other people. One of the most powerful things that you can do is while you're having trouble, be a blessing to somebody else. Now, I hope you came here today to find out how you could leave a better person. There's no point in coming here and hearing this if you don't intend to go out and do it. I don't care how much you underline or color in your Bible, that's not going to make any difference if we don't do it. Now, he said, not that I've already obtained this or I'm already made perfect, but here it comes, I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I've made it my own, but one thing I do, one thing, forgetting what lies behind. Some of you need to leave some things here today and not take them home with you anymore. It may be something from 15, 20 years ago. It may be something from this morning. But Jesus sits at the right hand of God continuously making inter intercession for us. And so that stream of forgiveness is flowing all the time. All you have to do is learn how to be a good receiver. Look, get good at taking what you don't deserve. Amen? Amen. I said, get good at taking what you don't deserve. God, if you want to bless anybody, here I am. You don't need to look any further. I know I don't deserve it, but I'm, I'll take it. Nobody can deserve God's blessings. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God. Now, let's just think for a minute about how hard it must have been for Paul to get over his past. He was a man just like us, 
And I cannot even imagine how the devil had to try to torment him because Paul had been persecuting Christians. He'd been gathering them up and putting them in jail. He was at the stoning of Stephen and was very happy to see him stoned to death. There's nothing in the Bible that says he was at the crucifixion, but I bet if he was anywhere in the neighborhood, he was there and was glad to see it happen. And he said, I'm going to forget what lies behind. You know why? If you don't do that, God, God can't use you if you don't do that. Because when we're just all full of guilt and condemnation and shame, we're, we're, just, we're no good to God. And he needs you. God needs every one of us that calls ourselves a Christian to be ready to work for him in his kingdom. Amen. Paul forgot his mistakes and he pressed on. He pressed past the condemning voices, the guilty feelings. And I'm sure they were loud. The spiritually mature people don't waste their time and God's time feeling guilty over every mistake and weakness. Well, there I go, Lord, being a human again, sorry. God needs us to be confident and he needs us to be bold. Confident and bold. Now, you may do something wrong and get forgiveness and still have some consequences. God doesn't always remove all the consequences. You go rob a bank, you can be forgiven, but you probably still go to jail. So I don't want to stand here and act like there's no consequences for sin because there can be. Now, there's mercy, and many times God gives us mercy, and he removes the punishment that we rightly deserve, but sometimes there are consequences. You cheat on your husband or your wife, they might forgive you once, but if you do it again and again, you're more than likely going to end up with a divorce. You can be forgiven, but you're still going to lose something. Sin is just not worth it. Now, I love this scripture, Hebrews 5, 12 through Hebrews 6, 3. Paul said, for though by this time you ought to be teaching others, you still need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. Paul wanted to preach stronger messages to them. He didn't want to do nothing but just come every time and tell them how wonderful they were and how loved they were and how cute they were and how talented they were. And he, he wanted to teach them stronger things. He wanted to teach them, grow up, get over yourself. Quit asking for something for yourself all the time. Pray for God to be able to use you. Be a giver, not a getter. Verse 13, for everyone, and this is, this is such an important line right here, for everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness. The biggest thing that we need to do is learn how to think like God thinks, and the only way you can do that is by knowing the Word of God. In Words to Live By, Joyce Meyer shares how studying the Word of God transformed her life. Experience a deeper and more meaningful relationship with God through the captivating collection of verses in this beautiful hardcover book by Joyce Meyer. Discover the transformative power of His Word. Words to Live By from Joyce Meyer. Get your YouTube exclusive offer today. Go to JoyceMeyer.org slash words and the number two. Have you ever been trapped in a never-ending frenzy where every passing moment feels like a blur, leaving you gasping for a chance to pause and catch your breath? In her insightful book, Pursuing Peace, Joyce Meyer explores the importance of seeking peace at all costs. This beautiful hardcover edition is filled with meaningful scriptures and uplifting quotes from Joyce, providing valuable guidance for living a peaceful lifestyle. So grab a cup of coffee, find a comfortable spot, and embark on your journey to find peace.
Remember, this limited time YouTube offer won't last long. Go to joycemeyer.org pursuit to get your copy today and start your pursuit of peace.